It's good afternoon from Hamburg to everyone and good morning or good night to wherever you are. Um, as a guest in the third day of Camp Nagel's festival, The Future of Code Politics. My name is Lorena and I'm one of your co-moderators. I'm a dark-haired Spanish woman with a beige dress and bare feet. Thank you for joining us. Um, this last day of our festival is all about decentering authority and we will do that with a little help of our experts. Our on-site audience already curated a museum today. Collectively, they traveled to the year 3021, where patriarchal violence is a distant memory once overcome by hacktivist strategies from outside Europe. This virtual museum on feminist technology critical work is available at HTTPS Musea, with a, mami, M-A-M-I, dot org. And we're not done talking about the future. The co-curators, Joanna and Lucia, will be your host for the coming panel, where you will be able to talk with your descendants about the future. To place questions um, on, uh, online, please use plus four nine one seven seven six nine zero four two nine five and use any messenger to send um, your questions. If you are in the audience here on set, please just step in front of that microphone. You don't need to take your mask off. It's a very powerful microphone. Over to you, Joanna and Lucia. Hola, buenas tardes. Hoy, boa tarde. Mari, Mari, Compuche, Halo, Guten Tag, um, Saluton, Padius, Miau, Amainaya, Sacosil, E, Cubasan. Eh, gracias a todas por estar acá. Gracias a Elena, Lorena, Fiona, a todas las organizadoras y también muy especialmente gracias a las técnicas y los técnicos, a Francis y todos los técnicos, porque sin los técnicos no, no saldría nada y esta conexión no sería posible. Um, venimos a hablar desde el 3021 y necesitamos buscar una lengua para comunicarnos con ustedes y aunque en el 2021 el español era una lengua marginalizada en ciertos contextos a la vez era una lengua colonial que arrasó con una complejidad de lenguas intraducibles este es el lenguaje del opresor y sin embargo lo necesito para hablarte this is the oppressor Oppressor's language, yet I needed to talk to you. These words uh, were words by Adrienne Rich, a white lesbian feminist, expressing the contradiction she felt in having to speak English. Do you know that in the future, where I come from, English is an extinct language, not used anymore? It suddenly, it suddenly a monopoly particularly with the rise of digital technologies, was a later considered a monoculture practice. Monoculture practices in any field were banished because they are the main cause of impoverishing fields and brains. Biodiversity, multiplicity of cultures, all had, be, had to be nourished for humankind still remain here on Earth. So, beyond all the tiredness of time traveling, I'm doing an even great effort today. We will do this effort by recovering this archaic English language in order to be able to communicate with you. Uh, this is a big effort for me and for all the panelists. Uh, to explore this archaeological experience of language and of every else. I am Lucia Gaña, I am an artist and I am here today after a long trip from 3021, where I am uh, the directress of MAMI, the Museum of Post Patriarchy, through which we will have today a guided tour. To be here from the future, I have embodied a representation of a typical human body. Shaped and dressed like 
just like at the 2021. I am, I am an hologram, a plausible copy of a so-called normal human, with long brown hair, light skin, black clothes, about 40 years old, and my hands are sweating. In addition to the language, uh, we are doing an extra effort technically. That's why I was saying thank you to the, technic to the technics here in the room. Uh, as you can imagine, in 3021, Zoom, YouTube, all these kinds of old technologies, also computers in general, are totally obsolete technology. So our biohackings, AS, we're all working for months to make this moment possible, to allow me and our guests to reach you, uh, to connect here and now in our past, in formats that you are used to watch. So this conversation seems a little bit more normal and less weird to you people from the Travelot 2021. Uh, how do we connect this visit from the future with the conversation you have been having these days in the distant 2021 at the future of code politics in Camp Nagel Festival? As our ancestors were listening uh, to us physically and virtually, can you draw lines that connect the challenges you have been discussing here with the insights from the distant future we are now bringing to you. And I have to say, it's a so big pleasure to be able to talk so directly with, with our ancestors, women and queers and people of colors today here. It's like an um, incredible pleasure and, well, I am so lucky. Um, so also coming from 3021, through this old technology, I want to welcome here the members of MAMI board, Constanza Figueroa, Connie, connected from a territory which in the past had, had a border that named it Chile, more specifically within the city of Santiago. Connie, do you want to self-describe yourself? <laughs> I, oh, I'm really excited. I'm a huge fan of the year 2021. Um, I'm actually uh, on a feminist bunker who was built in this period of time to uh, uh, help women who were victims of gender violence. I think that is not existing anymore. I'm uh, completely dressed in pink. I have a dark and curly hair. My face also looks a bit pink, I think, because it's very early in this territory. And uh, I'm, I'm wearing plastic jewelry. Um, yes, so I have a great uh, salutation for my grand, 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 grandsons and sisters and non-binary nietos. <laughs> Hola, mis niñes. <laughs> Thank you. And Loreto Macabravo, who is connected from a territory called, called Oaxaca, located in the land known as Mexico. Hi, Loreto. Hi, everybody. Hi, Lucia. I'm happy to be here with all of you. I am a gender fluid person. Today, I invoke my feminist forces to become this. I am a migrant butterfly. I am dressed with the colors of the universe. I invoke my Mapuche ancestors to accompany me today in this astral trip to the past. Currently and temporarily, I live here in a beehive where I practice uh, shared maternity. So thank you, everybody. Thank you. And Joanna Baron, connected from a territory called Ubatuba in the southeast of land so called Brazil. Hello, everyone. Um, probably what in 2021 people would identify as a woman. I have uh, black hair, long hair, curly hair. I'm wearing a rainbow. Uh, hologram has glasses, 
I'm in front of a bio construction wall uh, that has the color of the soil near a hammock and in front of um, some parts of Mata Atlantica, which is just increasing and increasing since the patriarchy felt. I'm Great. very pleased to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Joanna. And I want to present our special guest artist called Nima Ayer, connected for, from Frankfurt, a city in a territory that, by then, was full of very intensively surveilled borders called Germany. Hello, Nima. Hi, everyone. So, so excited to see everyone from 2021. I was supposed to be there in hologram, but I missed my connection on Mars. And so now I'm still floating around space. I'm so sorry I couldn't be there. But all this, I mean, super thankful to my great, 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 great um, grandmother who actually left Earth. And now I spend my days traveling the universe and learning from other countries, other other planets, other people. And it's, it's really an amazing lifestyle and an amazing place to be in 3021. So if I was to describe myself, I think I would say that I'm a mix of many different dark skinned people that came together back in the day. It was kind of taboo back then, but you know, it happened anyway. And so we're just brownish people and we have kind of dark brown hair. And I'm also wearing a very exotic fabric called cotton. And it's kind of um, reddish color, I would say. So yeah, um, I just really wanted to relate with all of you and kind of wear what I imagine you would have worn then. So I hope it's I hope it's coming off right. So really excited to chat with all of you and tell you about all my amazing travels. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Well, as your earth and ways of living are in the verge of collapse, we think this knowledge exchange can be insightful for you to change the track of destruction and oppression that humanity took. We expect to bring you hope by fostering your imagination because what it is now doesn't have to be. In our time, patriarchy has already fallen, not without the work of feminists, queers, and people of color all around the world. So our conversations will start acknowledging their bravery through a quick guided tour around Mami Museum and using that as a flame to sparkle conversation that bring you some insights about how is to live in a post-patriarchal era. Can you or we, you, imagine it? So I would like to ask for a big round of applause for all of them, these people that are now going to tell us a little bit about the Mami Museum, please. <laughs> And Connie, do you want to start telling the audience a bit about of the um, history of how did the patriarchy fail? Yes, of course. Thank you, Lucia. Uh, if you, I, I will show you a little bit uh, this Wikipedia page that we found from these ancient technologies. Cuisine uh, museamami.org slash caída del patriarcado. So I can tell, put this on your calendars because with a little patience in about 31 years, or maybe some of you, some are, uh, are going to leave this. And please put this, it's February 19th of the year 2052, when some women and sexual dissidents, feminists, located in what then was called the Global South, coordinated by secret and encrypted networks with lots um, uh, fed up with the violence and destruction of the planet in complicity with our dear companions from other spaces, got together to carry out a coordinated transnational prayer. Um, they call, they call, for liberation from the joke of the patriarchy and invoking 
Cecil Fatiman, a Haitian voodoo priestess with lots of music and dance on a day of eclipse. A call was made to the earth to take revenge of these oppressors. Suddenly, I, ah, I, 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 well, something, something like this started to happen. It was like an earthquake, no? In Chile, it was, uh, it's very normal to, 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 we are very used to, to, we were very used to, to have earthquakes. And the, the sound was really defining. Uh, and nothing like this was ever heard before. Uh, the, and, and, and as you can imagine, please, please try to think how the patriarchal institutions, buildings and monocultures, they all tremble and all the large corporate technology companies that for years were developing software and false narratives of freedom and the museums also that had stolen all kinds of living and non-living materials for centuries crumbled like sand. Then the world capital lost all its meaning. Everything, including persons that we called machitos, was falling through subtle cracks or large holes that opened in the heart. I, you, I, you can see now the picture of the hole left by Microsoft uh, dependencies at its, uh, its California headquarters. And yes, uh, also you can imagine uh, what the, the, the big hole that left Apollo or I Google it. Um, it, it. It was even, it didn't fit even in the camera. Uh, so yes, the land, <laughs> and it's a, a funny image, remained like a strainer, <laughs> a great Gruyere cheese. In, in, and in this land full of holes, then our great, 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 great grandmother had to surf, surf through this beautiful chouse to refund this new world free of patriarchy and neoliberalism and this deep, 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 creative, loveful, and bountiful disruption remains in our memories through the voices of our ancestors because the voice is our most ancient technology and the way to build our memories that I can bring from the future to you now. So, Joanna, in this context, can you try to explain what is the Museum Mami? Sure. Let me also share the screen of Mami. Oops. You are still seeing the fall of patriarchy, right? Yes. Well, the, the, our, our networks are very, are very nestable. And as you can <laughs> see, the wires are all, are all rotten. <laughs> and, and we have to, to look for other places. Yeah, we have mommy now. <laughs> Thank you, Joanna. Great. You can hear it. So, in celebration, of the fall of patriarchy, as in 2021, to remember that day, uh, and in order to keep alive the memory of our ancestors, Spanish uh, word fem in feminine for ancestors, we fought, uh, who fought for this to happen, we have inaugurated MAMI, uh, which is an advanced collective technology that resembles the structures of the so-called websites, but it's way more complex than that. It's like a mycelium that grows underground, connecting networks. The acronym of MAMI can take different forms and interpretations. For instance, it can stand for Museum of Art, 
from Melting Injustice, Museum of Archaeology, of Misogynous Injuries, or as far as your imagination goes to uh, assemble feminist acronyms. But uh, the, word ma the word mommy in Latin America is also a slang for both mother and attractive woman or partner. So mommy is ancestral, mommy is voluptuous and is revolutionary. It's also a hack in the colonial institutionality of museums. The history of museums is loaded with death, colonization, with the idea of preserving elements, representations, objects, creations. They are considered valid enough uh, for the one that's taking it from its original place. Uh, normally ordered in a very wide prioritization, attributing meaning to distracted pieces according to the values and rationalities of the colonizer. Mummy uses the structure of a museum, but it strips it from its traditional way of doing things in order to generate its own institutionality, which is parodic, insolent, precarious, and, co and coming exactly from the stripped uh, territories. So the act of declaring itself as a museum without asking anyone's permission seeks to destabilize uh, the hegemony of great institutions. And it's not governed by a uh, criteria of artistic excellence or institutional validation, but rather by the aim of hacking this violent and elitist institutionality through a collective action. So walking across MAMI virtual galleries, we'll see it in a bit, we can appreciate a series of artworks and archeological pieces produced by feminists in response to the now extinct and distant uh, patriarchal violence, which by the uh, 20 and 21 century acquired several forms, such as racism, lesbophobia, colonialism, sexism, extractivism, transphobia, among many others. Mami Collection is therefore an archive of different expressions of feminist voices that uses creativity as a radical response to violence, as a way to hack hate, meaning that it documents violence, uh, but doesn't reproduce the offenses themselves, what would eventually give more power to the offender. Quite the contrary, the spotlight is on feminist creativity strength and persistence. And its roots are in techno-feminism of Latin America, of Abayala, where activist creativity uh, was carried out without a lot of money or big resources, but with a lot of flame, desire, community, and a first urgency of survival. Uh, this is all translated in a collection that we will drive through. So I, I invite you, Maka, to show us, show us a bit of Mami collection. Thank you, Joanna. Um, so today I travel, I am a frequency, and I travel through the sound. So I will invoke the sound of the ocean to travel with me to the past and share with you some ideas about our collection. In this museum, we decide to talk about patriarchal violence, giving voice to our ancestral creativity 
that give a response to the violence. We don't want to be focused in the violence, in the patriarchal violence. We were be focused in the responses, in the creativity and the responses of the feminists. I invite you, all of you who are present here, to visit the collection through the rooms that name extreme forms of violence. But what is shown there are feminist responses of the distant 21st century. Naming is one of the practices that in the words of our ancestor, outer Lord, are capable of transforming silence into a language of action. Naming is one of the practices, but it's not, it's, not, it's not a matter of naming through a scheme of defining property through the name. It's not an authoritarian or patriarchal exercise. We find a way to signal and limit violence through its enunciation, naming and speaking through practices and creative responses. We decide not to focus on the harm itself and its details because we were not interested in talking about the immobility that caused victimization. We decide not to focus on the harm. We decide to focus of the health, or we decide to focus in time of healing. Healing was the center of our action as a feminist. Healing the earth, healing ourselves with earth, with food for the bodies, for our spirits, healing relationships, healing the relationship with other species and with our violent past was a task we did by invoking the herd. We looked for a way to help violence from the effective and agency feeling power of voices. We have created this collection based in two criteria. One is the format. So you will find in this collection uh, many different formats of creativity like painting, collage, performance, music, poetry, dance, and multiple expressions that even some did not fit in this collection. And the second criteria uh, to build this collection is naming the patriarchal violence with, uh, to which we respond with our feminist creativity. So you can see our collection uh, and understand how feminist movement, because we were like many different kind of feminists at that moment, but all of them were focused in healing our relationship between feminists, between species, between animals, plants, all of us we were focused in healing the harm of this patriarchal violence. Um, we want to invite you to visit all of these expressions and creativity that allow us to build a different future. Um, so right now, I want to invite Nima. Mami was in Egypt in Abjajala. Due to our ancestrality, it has more pieces from that region. But recently, Mami is also progressively including artworks from other contexts. Nima, can you bring some context from Uganda and Afrofuturism in the 20, 21st, please? Yes, I would be happy to do so. So these pieces are created by uh, both a technologist and an artist. So bringing in those two different perspectives 
in how we approach data and technology and how feminism can support this vision. So basically data is being used as a new form of control, um, you know, at this time. And in the African context, colonial, colonialism was very devastating. Um, it happened for many years and many resources were taken from the African context. And some of those, um, some of those repercussions are still felt many years after countries on the African continent got independence. And even though these countries have independence, you still feel the remnants of the colonial rule. And for example, a lot of patriarchal notions were actually brought in by colonial countries. So changing the culture of the countries that already existed there. And so these artworks are still trying to show basically where I am now. So you can see me in the future, but back then it was these images of what that future could look like and what freedom could really be for people. And all of this through the context of data, because in 2021, there is still very much digital extractivism, which is really a new form of neocolonialism, which takes place in our contexts, for example. So what happens is that certain, certain regions that you know, have different borders, they have much more technological resources, they have much more power when it comes to using the data for different purposes. And many countries in Africa, for example, are sites where these resources are extracted from, just like during colonialism. And also when you think about like digital labor, for example, as well, people in Africa would have to do many data labeling tasks, for example, and you know, be exploited in those ways as well. So these art pieces are talking about that kind of um, violence that can be enacted using data. For example, when you think about the uses of data for artificial intelligence, it can be used. Um, some countries in Africa are procuring different softwares that are you know, being used in facial recognition or being used in surveillance. And of course, surveillance of women is a major issue across the world. And these are kinds of the purposes that data could be used for. And so all of this really stems from the issue of capitalism. And of course, we know that we got into this post-patriarchal world because we gave up capitalism. That was a really important thing for us to do so that we could move forward as, um, as a species. Because once you let go of capitalism and you, you bring about these feminist ideals of like care, so whether it's digital care, when you think about um, using open source, when you think about being more collaborative and how you use data for the good of people. So that's all the, the visions that we had in those artworks that show that um, this is the kind of future that we want. We want it to be built on these ideals and that's really how we actually got there now. So that's what I wanted to show in those art pieces. Over thank to you. you all. Uh, thank you, Nima. But uh, I think I can go now uh, to visit Mami through its curadorias. Uh, if Joanna can can show uh, some of the curadorias. Oh, I know it has been a lot of information today, and I'm I, I'm aware that it can be a little uh, slow to process. So I can invite you to just take a little moment to make a pause and close your eyes and breathe. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. And the last one, inhale, exhale. And I hope if you can follow my voice, you can now feel a little better now. We know it's a lot of stress to process 
all this information. And also our screens are slow in to make those changes. And we had to learn to take care of ourselves because in the past time, feminists, we, um, as the, as the uh, habitants of today, uh, we have little, a uh, little time, but big ambitious. Uh, sorry, I, I listen to somebody. It's okay. It's everything okay. Yeah. So we have, uh, they have little time and big ambitious wishes for structural changes. So um, if you can uh, show uh, Cuidados Digitales and Abya Yala, uh, as we can see the disurgency that feeds uh, the dialogues that move ideas and actions aimed at breaking racist, sexist, eterno, et I, I'm sorry, I can't even spell it. It's like, so an ancient word, <laughs> heteronormative, yeah, heteronormative, what is heteronormative, what is, sorry girl, I, I can't understand what, what is that, but heteronormative and extractivist patriarchal, patriarchal structures. So, uh, well, the museum uh, can bring to you works that surface it from what was felt in the flesh and made the blood boil and erupted through words loaded with contextual stories. And when I say that the works are loaded, I can say palabras cargadas, often that are untranslatable because translation often erases the, context the contextual urgency Yes, how, 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 can you, can, how can we understand from the future and how to translate uh, uh, words like Elenao or even uh, Señoras de Internet or Resistencia Quilombola or Llega de Few Few or it, a lot of us, et cetera, those who never live, if, if you never live in a quilombo, I, I, I never have experienced uh, uh, harassment on the street. So I never heard a few, few. How can I understand? How can you? Well, I, I, I hope you can understand what are we talking because our research is, is, is very serious. So uh, we can go uh, again to, uh, yeah, we're in Curadoria. Uh, the feminist memories recollected by mommy forces visitants uh, through a non-linear journey because we are trying to break uh, the time, to step out of the progressive vision of time that is given by lin linearity grants as a transformative power. Uh, we are not thinking the time as something that go first and go then. We, we, we need to disorder the sequential narratives and forcing present time into past memories. Uh, where we can elude the immobility caused by contemporary catastrophic feelings. As uh, I think Maka said, uh, we were, they were a little par paralyzed. The things were not moving. And this time leaps, uh, we turn present into past and it enables playful and powerful forms of political imagination of futures that are not technophilic, being able to think about the future without remaining attached to the blind amusement of high tech narratives where all that is good needs to be new, high tech and ready to be bought and you can buy, 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 buy and new things is better and, and grand with a, a promise of great freedom that we all know that is a lie and freedom that perhaps gives room to more earthly imaginary solutions that emerge from the present as a way of impossibility. The future is a merely a way to narrate, a way to storytelling. In this sense, Mami is proposed as a narrative exercise 
where exercising the power to narrate is an exercise of speculative narratives. Wow. <laughs> I think it's working. Joanna, Joanna, are you here? Can you hear me? Sure. Connection with the future is working. <laughs> so this is Mami. And I, as Connie said, I think there is a lot for you to take in. It reflects the violence that are still present in your, in your presence. And if we name it and we fight it, we from the future know it's going to end. And the last thing I want to say about it is that mommy is also, and like, as I said, uh, other museums, anyone can come and hang a feminist piece at art, uh, of art at mommy's wall, meaning that the collection is open uh, for anyone who wants to upload the piece and is uh, inspired by strict, act strict actions, guerrilla of communications and other strengths and creativity of our companions who have of, uh, offered resistance to patriarchal violence. So uh, the expansion of feminist expression exhibit at MAMI is the expansion of a community as well, through workshops or simply empathy that people who decided to upload things, which can be done also in that platform through a form. Nonetheless, due to the kind of ancestrality, uh, we want to give uh, recognition and visibility. Uh, participants are more welcome to upload pieces. They are not from what was then, by your time, called the Global North. So this is it, Lucia. Okay. Yeah, before I offer the, the floor to ask questions from the audience physically and virtually here, I would like to ask you, you four, um, what did we have to change in order to reach feminist future? Uh, what was needed to snatch it out of the hands of those who told us it was not going to happen? This, like, this possibility to, to be alive in 3021. I don't know, Connie, if you want to start or who wants. Yeah, yeah I, I was trying to, uh, to, to bring again what somebody told me once, maybe eating uh, some flowers. Uh, yeah, and, and they told me that, uh, also, uh, they listen that they had to run away from the hands, from those who wanted to take the future from us. They take uh, responsab uh, take responsibility uh, for the destruction of the planet and traumatize so so deep. And uh, their strategy was uh, immobilize uh, the people, control, destroy their self-esteem, uh, keep them with uh, a lot of violence, a lot of stress. So they can't face it. And uh, they can't fight the power who were really destroying the planet. <laughs> That was, that, that is something that I can remember, but I can't remember a bit more. Uh, perhaps Maka, can you add something? Because sure, I sure. barely understand it. Yeah, one of the things that we, uh, one second, let me use this sound. I think you hear, hear me better like this. 
um, one of the things that we changed was the communication, the value of the communication. My, my grand grandmother told me that in the 20s, 21st, people like love to be communicated, love to be connected and over communicating all the time. And like some feminist movement felt that that was too much and that we need to recover the value of the communication and understand that communication is a special and a space very sacred, sacred, sagrado. And we start to maintain silence for a while and trying to understand the value of that communication, no? So now in, in, in my present is your future. Now we communicate through sounds, the body, the crystals. Today for us, communication has a sacred value. We put an end to the idea of being in communication all the time. Communicating is the moment in life when we appreciate the respect of the other, the openness of the heart. We use the sound of nature to communicate our message. We use crystals to transmit our sound. So I, I brought here this crystal who I heritage from my ancestors. And this crystal is, is the crystal that allow me to travel into the past and bring here some of the sounds of the what we use in our present, your future. <sighs> This is the sound of our caracol. This is the sound of our ancestors. This is a way to communicate some ideas about how we live in the future. So we use these sounds of nature to communicate when we feel fine, when we need help, when we want to share something. This is a very special moment when we open our hair, earth to her to, to say something. Today, my sisters might give me this crystal. It is a quartz that my mother heritage from her ancestors. And it is, it is to communicate only things from the past that were held with the love of women. So we use different kinds of crystal to communicate with our people. Communication right now is one of the more amazing things during the day. We have only few moments to communicate with our friends, our sisters. Thank you. I don't know if uh, Nima or Joanna want to answer to this question. Also, yeah, I can go. So it's it's really what my ancestors told me. Of course, I wasn't there when all of this happened, but I do know that the earth was really destroyed 
of course, and we lost our connection to nature, to sounds, to really connecting with our planet that had given us so much because we had this system. I, I heard that there was something called money, which was kind of this piece of paper. And people were really, really into this, these papers. I, I don't really, I can't really conceptualize why we would be really into paper, but it was something that ruled the whole world. And that, you know, some people were said to be from poor countries and they didn't get to make decisions about anything. And then some people had lots of this paper, which they made a lot of decisions. So, but people were chasing this paper and it was really destroying the planet. And finally feminists, you know, they said, we need to stop this. We need to connect to nature. We need to stop chasing the paper. We need to care for one another. We need to, you know, have time for ourselves, for our creative pursuits. Like you can't, I, I heard people back then would like wake up in the morning and go to a, a building. And then they would sit there in that building, like from eight to seven, like the whole day they would sit in this building and they would be like a screen and they would just like see the screen. Um, and then they would make a bit of a bit of this paper and then this paper would go to like the person who owned the buildings. And so it was just a system where nobody was, was really happy and we weren't living to our full potential. And so I heard that um, these movements, which were, you know, underfunded and unappreciated, really worked to get out of that system, to embrace nature. And when we didn't chase this paper anymore, we had all the time to really live our full lives. And that's really how my ancestors left the planet, because they had so much time to um, work on scientific projects and make scientific discoveries and we just left the planet. And since then we've been, you know, exploring different worlds and I, I love my life. I get to, I get to be anything I want. So I think that's what I heard happen. I wasn't there. It could be urban legend, but that's, that's the story I have. Great. Thank you. I think we have just some minutes. So Joanna, if you want to answer also to this question, maybe. Yeah, I was recalling with you the other day how it was important uh, when all binaries vanished, not only in terms of the very limited and biologizing gender binarism um, that was erasing a wide rainbow of possibilities for existence, uh, causing a anxiety, a lot of anxiety, but also other forms of binarism imposed by Western colonization. That oversimplification of the complexity of life, giving more weight and importance to one side of a double coin. For instance, human versus nature, science versus ancient knowledge, body versus mind, emotions versus rationality. Um, what is like se separating what is in the past uh, from what should be seen uh, in the future, as if one thing could be apart from another. So all this binarism gave a uh, margin to a lot of oppression of particular bodies and destruction of territories and livelihoods. But when a more holistic view prevailed, uh, binary institutions collapsed and became outdated. So I think it was very important moment as well. Okay. Um, I'm not sure if there are some questions here, but I think also we have just five minutes. I don't know if, if one of you, Connie, or want to, to share a question with the audience to left it open. And maybe after this we can close with an artwork of the museum. So, Connie. 
Yes, uh, as we have a little time and I'm really tired of being in front of the screen, I don't know how can you do to make it for hours and hours and days and years and I don't know. Uh, so our question is a very big question and it's what do we need to change in order to retain the future? Is it that the question? What 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 was what 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 was it the question? Yeah, something like that. What do we have to change? And I'm not uh, talking about change in this. Um, I don't know coaching relationships. It's like what really need to change so we can exist in the future. Well, it's thanks, a, Lucia, it's, for holding the space. It's a big question, Connie. So we would like to end with music and with an artwork of the museum. Uh, it's the track Soy la Gorda, I am the Fat, by one of the members of the board of MAMI, uh, Yela Kim, from this territory called in the, in the radical past as Colombia. Uh, you can find this great artwork and more works from Yela Kim exhibiting the Mami collection as well. So I don't know if you are ready, Joanna, to share this like great song. It was a song recorded in the 2020 or 19 in Colombia in a big meeting uh, from fat, fat activists from Latin America. So we will finish with this song. Soy la gorda. Thank you, you all for your time. Yes, and your thank presence. you. And you can dance thank if you for want. For the space. <laughs>
Thank you and thank you for all our mummies, lover. Um, this is the end, I think. Yeah, the end of this connection with the future. Ciao.